Three straight losses, four of their last five are losses. They lose two to one to Texas. The Mets lost, so they had an opportunity to pick up a half game there and said they fall back six games. Ricky Patalico, Ben Davis, I'm Michael Barkan. You're watching Phillies post game live. Really, I think the, the last at bat by Alec Baum, and we'll, we'll update the numbers on the leadoff position, as I said during the game to Ben and Ricky, where, where leadoff hitters go to, go to die. Uh, is the uh, Philadelphia Phillies lineup, unfortunately. But when you look at Bohm's last at bat, Ricky Bo, that, that told everything. Just this hesitant check swing. That was and not a boom. hesitant check swing. He had two strikes on him. He was trying to protect. The ball broke away from him. He didn't have an opportunity to hold back. I, he definitely went on the pitch. This is what it is right now. You can blame, don't blame, don't blame that on Alec Bohm no, right there. No, I'm not there. blaming Phillies, the once loss again, on Alec Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm saying that was just a microcosm. That's Phillies, how the whole tentative thing look. Philly's got great starting pitching today. This is they exactly sure what we were pointing out at, in pregame that they're not gelling. There's something going right every game. There's something going horribly wrong every game. Once again, 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. Pathetic. The other thing, this runner on second base is a bunch of garbage. This well, you is the can't biggest, blame it on that This either. is the biggest joke in Major League Baseball starting with a runner on second base. Right? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go play wiffle ball in the backyard. You could have a runner on second, Michael. Mm -hmm. well, you're a bad hitter. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I would like to at least see them start it after the tenth inning. At least try an extra inning with regular baseball rules before they lapse into that. I don't that. like it. Ben, your impressions? Well, I, I don't think there's anything you can do about the rule. I mean, the bottom line is the Rangers succeeded in the task and the Phillies did not. I just hate the fact that they wasted such a great performance from Zach Wheeler. This guy was. Dominant. I know it's not the best hitting lineup over there in the Texas Rangers clubhouse, but he dominated them. Seven and two thirds, just 78 pitches. Are you kidding me? Uh, that was something special to watch. It was it was explosive tonight, but they wasted it. Uh, but this is it's not good right now. This, the double plays are, are mounting up. The strikeouts are mounting up. And the leadoff spot is continues to be abysmal. Yeah, sure does. Let's bring in John Cruck. Call tonight's game with Tom McCarthy. John, I, I have six for their last 47 with runners in scoring oh. position, and um, that that obviously is it's terrible numbers. And we talked about Zach Wheeler a moment ago. Waste that performance. I, I don't know what's going to get these bats going more consistently, John. Do you have any thought on that? Uh, yeah, you know, it, you watch Didi's at bat when Segura was on second base to start the inning, there in the tenth. And he was trying to tie the game up. The, the thing you have to tell yourself with runs in scoring position is you have to slow it down. You start speeding up and you try to try to be the hero. I call him hero at bat. Sometimes you just have to put a ball in play and, and, and hope it finds a hole. You know, this, this, this uh, and it's not just Didi. It's a lot of different guys, but uh, you know, the more you can slow the game down late in the game in a close game, the better chance you have of having success. And it just looks like the Phillies lately have not been able to do that late in games or with runners in scoring position. It's like, you know, we're struggling with runners in scoring position. I have to be the guy. I have to be, you know, sometimes you have to pass the torch to the next guy and see what happens. But, um, you know, it, it'll come. It, you know, it, it's one of those things I think that, uh, uh, you know, once they start, Finding success with runners in scoring position, other guys will feed off of that, and it has to be someone that steps up and, and takes the bull by the horn and say, I'm going to be that guy to drive in a run with runners in scoring position, and then, uh, you know, hopefully the next guys follow suit. So, uh, you know, that that's what it always has been. When I played on teams that we struggled with runners in scoring position for a stretch, you know, it's a broken bat single. I mean, look what Brad Miller did to drive in those two runs. He hit it off the end of the bat, but, you know, he put it in play, and he made the Phillies make a play, and it was in no man's land, and no one can make that play, which it happens. Yeah. John, John, how concerning is it that when you look at the Phillies in the last 10 games, their starting pitching is under a three, e or excuse me, their pitching as a whole, ERA, is under a three. And I believe the Phillies are now four and six in those games. How concerning is that? It's bothersome because, you know, we thought that the offense would be able to carry this team if the pitching struggled, but that's not happening now. And, and, you know, the pitching has been great. Starting pitching has been great. Wheeler tonight was unreal, like like I heard Ben say. But, you know, at some point the offense has to take the stress. I, I, look, I didn't pitch. Rick, you pitched. But 
you have to take the stress off these guys by scoring runs and scoring them early and letting them breathe. And if I make a mistake, it's no big deal. You know, our, our starting pitchers now are going out, and they know that you know the third, fourth, fifth inning could be the deciding factor in a game because the Phillies aren't scoring that many runs. And uh, you know, at some point, they have to make it stress-free on the on the pitchers by scoring runs early. John, I know it's it's very easy for us as analysts to be the Monday morning quarterback, but in the bottom of the fifth, yeah, JT Romuto walks, Cal Swerber walks, first and second, nobody out. How does Gene Segura not lay down a punt there? I mean, it'd be different if Gene was hitting 330, but the bottom line is he's hitting 231, good chance to advance the runners. He's good handling the bat. Advance the runners in that situation. Currently, the way they're swinging the bats, I think it has to get done. Yeah, in a perfect world, yes. But, you know, you have to remember the guys coming up behind him, you know, Didi's Dee Dee, Dee been hot and cold. Veerling after him is, uh, uh, you know, he, he hasn't been swinging the bat well at all. And I'm sure Joe probably thought, all right, well, Segura is, last year was one of our best hitters. Uh, you know, early in the year, he was one of our best hitters. So I got to live with, live and die with him trying to drive in a run. Uh, you know, I, I just think it's it's the, the lineup is struggling. So, you know, if you give up an out, there's no guarantee that you're going to score runs. I mean, look, we had a guy on second base to start the 10th inning. And if it wasn't for the... Uh, you know, defensive indifference that they allowed Segura to go to third, they might not have scored in the 10th either. Yeah. Uh, lastly, John, we've been talking about Bryce Harper a lot, obviously with his elbow injury. He has had just one hit in the last five games, another 0 for tonight for the second straight game. Four of his last five have been 0 for his. I, I don't know what the issue is with him, if it's related to the elbow, just the fact he's not playing right field. Um, any thoughts on that? Well, it, it could be Look, if it's the elbow, you got to give him credit for going out there. If yeah. he's hurting, it's hurting his swing uh, to try to help this team win. And, and, you know, that's what the face of the franchise does. You know, you're hurt, you play. Uh, you know, unless it's a, a bad injury and you can't play, we get it. But if Bryce thinks he can play, he's in the lineup. Now, if it was someone else on this team, you know, and said, you know, hey, my elbows bother me, but I think I can play, Joe might set him for a few days just to – Get that thing healthy. But with, if Bryce walks in and he says, Joe, I can play. I, I can't play the field, but I can DH. He's going to play. I hope it's not the elbow for the reason why he has had struggles recently. I hope it's just a mechanical thing. Uh, you know, we talk about all the time is, is when Bryce is on balance, it's beautiful. And he's hitting the ball to left. He's hitting the ball to right. He's hitting the ball up the middle. Um, but when he struggles, he's off balance a little bit. He's chasing pitches out of the zone, which, uh, you know, that happens when, you know, really, really good hitters struggle. That's basically the, the, the thing. It's either, you know, you hope he's not injured, and if he's not, you hope he stays in the strike zone and gets good pitches to hit. Yep. Last one, Mets coming in for four. Uh, that makes me shudder. I, I don't know what we should expect here. Maybe, maybe they'll turn it around, but the Mets have owned them so far. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, Michael, the thing it's, that stinks is, uh, you know, Look, our starting pitch, pitching has been really good, but you're playing a four-game series against the Mets, and you're not going to—the Mets aren't going to see Zach Wheeler again. He didn't pitch in the three-game series in New York. He pitches every time he pitches the day before, and uh, the day before they play the Mets. So, uh, you know that—that that to me is a disadvantage when you can't throw your ace out there against them. I get it. You keep guys in their rotation. I, I understand that, uh, but it's just the way the schedule's worked out. Yeah. That Zach hasn't been able to play or pitch against the Mets yet. And, well, in the last this series and then this series coming up. Good news is Tyler McGill uh, pitched today for the Mets. So the Phillies won't face him. That's it. Oh, we've, we've, we've lit him up. Yeah. What are you oh, about? yes, indeed. All right, John, we'll check you tomorrow. Thanks hey, so much for your time. I'm John not, Cook, I'm not coming. Us. I'm not coming tomorrow. <laughs> I need a break. We're going to send some. I'm going to start like the sixth inning, like they start on Saturday. I like race. it. I like it. That's the new yeah. rule now for show, broadcasters. Show up in the sixth. In baseball. John Crook yeah. now. No pregame show or tomorrow either. Do you guys just start later, too? I like it. We'll just start with a postgame show. No, Michael used to have to do stuff because oh, okay. the Sixers got their asses kicked, too. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to uh, get to that, too. Believe yeah, me. good luck with that. Thanks so much. Man, he's just a. He's a bundle of great news. John Cruck joining us.